Hello my friends, Jacob is here once again. Thank you for pressing play, for spending a little time with me. I wasn't planning on coming to you from space, if it exists. I wasn't planning on visiting you from the virtual set today, but I had to. I, I wasn't planning on even sharing this program, but then more and more and more information comes out and it's like, okay, I get it. Maybe I should share it with all of you. Who knows what it means, right? Uh, the uh, the main stream media <laughs> oh good grief think about that for a second a stream is where everybody gets their life force right water Whew. the main one so the the uh, the uh, the the spirit source if you will truth lies whatever's being sent out into the world that's the mainstream so from the mainstream you know people are very confused and they're very uh, they're very they put their trust in all that stuff and now they're being exposed to be very, very unreliable. Well, we already knew this, right? But now it's like, even they're saying that they're unreliable. But the day we're in is very concerning, regardless of what lamestream, I mean, mainstream media is, uh, is, is saying. And they're always like eight, eight days behind, it seems. Maybe a little longer. They're just starting to talk about these pyramid craft that Jeremy Corbel and Knapp and, you know, that they released. And I did a video. This was my last video. If you haven't seen it, it'll come at the end of the, uh, at the end of the show. Click on it or, or just click here, this link. that video paves the way for this video. If it wasn't for that video and something that I felt and I said and I didn't really understand why I was saying it, where I was quoting from the book of Jeremiah, yeah, we're going to get into that today. This is a prophecy, if you will, of the coming days, which perhaps we are in. Which perhaps we are in. Is there a northern army about to uh, attack the, uh, the king of the south? Pharaoh? Egypt? When you got Egypt's all over the news? Oh, ho, ho. you better be buckled up for this one. Welcome back to the show. Of course, well, mainstream media has caught up and they're reporting about these pyramid shaped UFOs, these crafts, right? Which, as I said before, I talked about. Pyramids are everything, right? Right. This, 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 this news comes out. What, like, right, right after the uh, the great <laughs> mummy parade, the, the the Pharaoh parade, the golden parade, where they laid the twenty two mummies and more to rest in this big hoopla event. Before that, you had the Pope having an interfaith type of a service at the uh, the ancient Anunnaki temple, the ziggurat. On the show, we said probably this was going to be the year. something about these pyramids there's something about Egypt right on the channel haven't we been talking about the plagues of Egypt well you know what happens at the end because we've been kind of leading up to it Israel's sent into the wilderness right Pharaoh drives them out then gets you know ends up 
drowning in the uh, the sea, but we're not going to get into that today. But it is ironic that they are, they're, they're talking about that Pharaoh, like right now. Scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. Perhaps everything that is now has already been, right? And will always be. Who knows? We're part of a story that's already written. That's the best part. That's why I call it the big summer blockbuster. That's why we should rejoice. Why am I talking to you about all of this now? Why am I bringing up Pharaoh? And why am I bringing up Egypt? And why have we been discussing this uh, like nonstop for a couple of years now? Well, the reason is that when Israel is driven out, they're driven out to go to the promised land, okay? You, you think the system hasn't brought a lot of people joy, so it needs to change and God's changing it. And change sometimes is hard and a little scary. That's why we're supposed to put our, our faith in the Lord. Because He's going to lead us out. Cloud by day, right? The witness of God by day, when you understand. And then fire by night, when you're being a meathead and you don't know any better, things are gonna be hard until you wake up and get back on the bus. I was literally praying, right? I, sometimes I listen and I pray and I cry out to God. I do, I do all the time because I don't like the way the things look in the world. I don't like hearing about stuff with Biden and with Putin. I don't like hearing about all that stuff. And then I don't like having to come on here and then bring up something from the book of Jeremiah, which may or may not have some kind of literal consequences, but really it's a spiritual story. out to God. I'm like, oh Lord, help. And then at one point, I'm, 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 because I listen to music sometimes and I pray when I listen to music and I, I just kind of started to sing and I was like, break the chains, break the chains, please break the chains. Like I'm talking about everybody's chains, like the stuff that drags us down, our fear, our anger towards each other. Like just, I was like, Lord, just break the chains, break the chains. And then it hits me. You got to talk about Israel. Got to talk about the slaves being set free. You gotta talk about how it wasn't a fun day. Can you imagine? You're all comfy, and then all of a sudden you're driven out of the land that you've and your ancestors have known forever? That's why it's so important to trust God, because God's got a plan, and it gets better. Jeremiah talks about uh, the, the, the God's vengeance on his foes, but really the foes of God are, are inside of us already. It's all the stuff that's not true because God is, right, is truth and love and joy and power and peace, right, and judgment and uh, lies. Not so much God. God doesn't give us the spirit of fear and there's torment and fear. So all these things that are the, the enemy of God and God who is love. So the enemy of love Love's going to take vengeance on. How's that going to happen? By using each other against each other. So the bad do the bad things and they end up, there's a judgment for it. It's like, it's like, it's a reaping and sowing. What you do to one, you got to get back. You got to pay the price. You got to pay the piper. You just don't pay more because, you know, the price has already been paid. That's the good news. And I do feel like it's, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Even though it may not seem okay. Can't stress that enough. Buckle up, right? That's the shirt. So why am I even bothering with Jeremiah 46? Well, it's because of Egypt. It is because of uh, the, the pharaohs, right? Because it's all, it's in the news. The Suez Canal, that's like a big deal, right? All that news, everything has to do with the, uh, with, with the Egypt. 
<laughs> okay? And what are they calling it? Because they just did the, uh, the big parade, the golden parade, where they moved the 22 mummies, right? I've talked about this on the show. So they're saying, oh, all the troubles, it's the Pharaoh's curse. They had a major rail, people died, it was a terrible tragedy, the Suez Canal. These disasters, they're saying, is it the Pharaoh's curse? And archaeologists are like, no, that's kind of silly. <laughs> that's kind of silly. It's just strange, right? The timing of it. Bad things are happening to Egypt. Get it? Plagues of Egypt, right? Gets in the last one. It's the death of the firstborn of everything in that place. Every lie that you've believed, every imagination, every hardship. <sighs> Gone away so you could be set free. And ironically, because we're talking about Moses, right? Well, Moses was a type of Messiah and everybody's waiting for the Messiah to come. That word come, erkame, means to be manifested, to be revealed. God, Christ, has never left you nor forsaken you. So find out what the hope of glory is. Christ in you. A star will come out of Jacob. It's, that's in... Uh, book of numbers when you start to understand that a lot of the stuff that happens in a literal is an expression of what happens in the spiritual it's easier to understand scriptures like in the end days a man's enemy will be in his own house and really the, the house of the lord is you so the only enemy there really is is in your head messing with you getting you to be scared getting you to worry about this or that and not just trust in the lord not to mention that we, we were talking about that three thousand year old city Which is really a big deal because that was the one that I mentioned in my last video, which brought me to that passage in Jeremiah. Famed Egyptologist Zahi Hawaz announced the discovery of the lost golden city near Luxor on Thursday. He said the finding of the largest city known as Atan. Atan. Ever uncovered. It was like the golden one. It was like the, uh, the pride of Thebes. Ironic because Thebes is mentioned in scripture which is the point that I made about how God was going to bring vengeance on Thebes, the God of Thebes, the system, and Pharaoh in Egypt, this system. Guess what it was on earth? 2020, right around that perfect time. It's interesting. This is supposedly what the second biggest discovery that's ever been made. Second biggest, like right up there with Tutankhamun. to give us a glimpse, they say, into Egypt at its wealthiest and fattest state. Because it was so great, right? So you got the pyramid UFOs, you got the discovery of the ancient city, you got, you got Egypt coming together with the U.S. coalition, the, the maritime forces in the Gulf. Egypt is now part of our mighty army like an extension, if you will, of the U.S. forces, the maritime forces. Wonder why that is. Everybody's building stuff up. So as all this stuff is happening, right, Egypt's becoming this big powerhouse. Turkey hails a new era with Egypt after a long time. They've come to terms they put their past behind them, Turkey and Egypt. This is a big day. Egypt's celebrating something. Hmm? Wonder if it's the, uh, the return. It's a big deal with the pyramids. As I'm researching all this stuff, right? And with the Egypt and the Pharaoh and all of this stuff. Which, by the way, like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce put something up like Pharaoh, pyramids, and it was, it was talking about four steps 
that the Egypt and the U.S. are going to work together. But as I'm doing all that research, I find out the greatest, the greatest scammer, hashtag player, of uh, the pyramid scheme, Bertie Madoff, he passed away. Anybody who plays the game of the pyramid is gonna go, I guess that's what, I don't know. It's not good to take advantage of people. And not to mention, the in New York, the, the, uh, the Pyramid Club. It's like a very famous club that I never knew about because I wasn't into the music scene back in the day. But Red Hot Chili Peppers played their first, Nirvana played their first. The Pyramid Club was like a very interesting place from what I saw. They closed. Egypt's Suez Canal shut down. It was a big problem. They lost a lot of money, now they're suing. People are asking, is it the curse of the pharaohs? Well, I'm asking, Lord, are you bringing the judgment? Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, you're bringing the judgment. It's been brought. It's been brought. So there's going to be a climactic ending to it. You know, when you turn away from the Lord, you turn away from love, you turn away from being good stewards of what you've been given, treating others the same way you want to be treated. You think that you're going to be going along life and it's going to always be so good? Nah, ah, bad guys, right? You're going to pay, you're going to pay the price. You think that you're so great. That's what the Lord says in the book of Jeremiah. You think you're so strong, Egypt and Pharaoh. You got all, you got wealthy. You, he, he basically calls them like fattened calves. You've gotten so gluttonous and so nasty. You got a bunch of people that are supposed to protect you. You got a, your armed forces. Well, when the king of the north comes... Everybody's going to go bye-bye. They're going to scatter. You're going to be scared. And you're going to be left in ruin. I'm going to read this to you, okay? Because really, this has more to do with what's going on spiritually. But yeah, it's probably going to happen in the world zone. possibly happen in the world soon if people don't repent remember when people repent god repents it happens it's like if you do you, you, you learn your lesson you, you see what's happening you're like hey you know maybe we should be better maybe we should love each other maybe we should be grateful for the gift that we've been given this beautiful planet this beautiful our beautiful lives our beautiful families maybe we should be better stewards stop blaming everybody and you know, using justification as to why you could hurt somebody. Maybe, maybe it's time to repent. Maybe if everybody came together and said, we're sorry, Lord, help us, Lord, lead us, Lord, and live for Christ, which is the power and wisdom of God, and God is love, the power and wisdom found in love and more, maybe then there wouldn't be a need for war. But if people don't repent, they don't change their ways, got to learn the hard way, right? There's actually a passage in Scripture that says that if you come to Christ, you're going to be broken, right? And what's being broken? It's the uh, false idea of you. It's the one that's uh, scared all the time, in pain all the time, angry all the time, feels like a failure, filled with shame. That's the one that gets broken. It gets broken, right? The, 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 the potter has power over the clay to shape it and reshape it as it sees fit. So you come to Christ, you can be broken. But if you don't, guess what? You could be smashed to bits. I don't want to be smashed to bits. I don't want to go to Nineveh in the uh, the belly of the great fish. I'd rather go on like a, you know, uh, Royal Caribbean cruise line, you know, pre-virus of the crown.
shared in the video um, this passage right here. The Lord Almighty God says, I'm about to bring punishment on Ammon, God of Thebes, on Pharaoh, on Egypt and her gods and her kings, and on those who rely on Pharaoh. It's going to bring judgment on uh, anybody who relies on Pharaoh and the system. And you know, in Isaiah 30, it says, the strength of Pharaoh is your shame, will be your shame. And it says, the shadow of Egypt will be your confusion. If you put your trust in the system, you think that this system and the way things are is going to protect you and guide you and lead you and keep you safe, you're wrong. It's futile. It's selfish. put your trust in God, it's going to lead you beside still waters. Right? It's going to make a table before you in the presence of your enemies. The Lord's rod and staff comfort me. It means I'm led one time and then I'm banged down the other. It's like, you're going the wrong way, Jacob. Get back in line. I like when bad times come because it gets me to question why am I going through them. And most of the time, I can, uh, I can source it to myself. That's why God's going to bring judgment. So the question is, is this Jeremiah chapter 46 prophecy, right? Which literally played out in the world back in the day, but is it something for today as well? Or is this speaking of something within completely? Because I believe it could be both, but I'm hoping it's just within. So now if you look at the world the way it is, you look at, say, like the United States of America and everything, you know, there's all the pyramids everywhere, right? It's on the dollar bill. So you see, we know we're kind of like we're Egypt, right? So who would be the Pharaoh? So let me read this to you. This is the message the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon to attack Egypt. Take your positions and get ready for the sword devours those around you. Why will your warriors be laid low? They can't stand for the Lord will push them down. They'll be stubble repeatedly. They'll fall over each other. They'll say, get up. Let us go back to our own people and our native lands away from the sword of the oppressor. They will exclaim, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is only a loud noise. He's missed his opportunity. They'll say, Pharaoh's got no strength. He's got no power anymore. The guy who's running the show, he's weak. That's what they're going to say. Or that's what they're saying. Announce this in Egypt. They're going to say it. In all of Egypt, you're going to hear, he's weak. He's only all talk. He's a big noise. As surely as I live, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty, one will come who is like Tabor among the mountains, like Carmel by the sea. Pack your belongings for exile, you who live in Egypt. Get ready. You're about to be driven out. Get ready for exile. For Memphis will be laid waste and lie in ruins without inhabitant. Egypt, listen to this, is a beautiful heifer. But a gadfly is coming against her from the north. There's going to be a king, a northern army. 
is going to come. Northern army. And the mercenaries in the ranks of Egypt, you know, those that are, you know, we're, we're standing together with you in your fight against, you know, tyranny. Meanwhile, they're the tyrannous ones, it seems, in Egypt, at least in the day. The mercenaries in our ranks are like fatted calves. They too will run, they'll flee together. They won't stand together for the day of disaster is coming upon them. A time for them to be punished. Egypt will hiss like a fleeing serpent. As the enemy advances in force, they'll come against her. Check this out, with axes, like men who chop down trees. They'll cut down her forest, declares the Lord. Dense though it be, they are more numerous than locusts. They can't be counted. Daughter Egypt, you will be put to shame and given into the hands of the people of the north. There's a major prophecy in uh, many of the old books, Daniel, where the, uh, the statue, the dream, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream and the last kingdom was, it was like a mixed kingdom, but it was, uh, it broke apart pretty easily. Sounds a lot like the kingdom that's being spoken of right here. Sounds a lot like the kingdom that is ruling in the world today. It's very scattered. Doesn't seem to really hold together. Doesn't really seem very strong, does it? So this brings me to the verse that I shared in my last video. The Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel says, I'm about to bring punishment on Ammon, God of Thebes. I like, I like the word Amon. Sounds like a man. I'm about to bring punishment basically on the carnal man, right? The, uh, the false idea of who we are. The bad parts of us, the beast nature of us, the antichrist in us. And, you know, maybe literally in the world too. Amon of Thebes, the god of Thebes and Pharaoh. So Amon is the god of Thebes. Think about that for a second. Pharaoh, it's like worshiping this uh, this carnal form, worshiping the ways of the world. Like I've said before, this, this world is Egypt, it's, right? On a dollar bill, it's everywhere, the, uh, the all-seeing eye and the pyramids. It's all, come on, God's gonna bring judgment. That's what he's saying. He's gonna bring it on Pharaoh, on Egypt, her gods, her kings, those that are ruling, those that people worship. How many celebrities, right? How many stars are worshiped in Egypt today? They're throwing out their big parades and their big this and everything, the glitz and the glamour, and God's like, oh, I'm gonna break it down. It's not good. The system's not good. It's corrupt. We see how corrupt, right? We see how things are harder. When God said, set your people free, I did a video a year ago about this where, you know, God was saying, you know, the plagues come and uh, God's like, no, nah, you, you got to set a, the, the people free. But what does Pharaoh do? He doesn't, he says, you know, make things harder for him, right? Now you got to shut down businesses. Now you got to do this. You got to do that. Make things harder for them, the slaves, but they're going to get theirs. I'm going to bring punishment against all of those who rely on this system too. You know, this world's not going to save you. You can you never bring you joy, putting your faith here, becoming a celebrity. None of this stuff is going to work for you. You got to put your faith in the Lord. You got to put your faith in the only thing that matters, the, uh, the, the creator of all, the source of all. It's foolish to think of yourself as separate. This is the good news though. But even though God says, look, I'm coming against the system. It's not the curse of the Pharaohs. It's me, right? I, Egypt will be inhabited again. And then he goes on to, and this is what was ironic is when I was praying, I was thanking God and I was asking him to break the chains. This was like my notes. My notes were like right in front of me. And I looked down and I read this. Don't be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Don't be dismayed, Israel. That's all of you. Just so you know. <laughs> That's all of you. I will surely save you out of a distant place. Your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security and no one will make him afraid. As I'm crying out, because I am I get worried sometimes of things to come, right? I'm not impervious of a little fear because there's torment in it. And what do I do? I pray. I said, show me, Lord, show me. And then boom, 
don't be afraid, Jacob, my sir. For me, it was really cool because it's me, right? So, but, but really, this is a message for all of you. It's for everybody. It's for all of Israel, which means God prevails, just so you know. I will save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, for I'm with you. Think about that for a sec. Don't be afraid, for God is with you. God is with you. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, even though I'm going to bring everything to ruin around you, I'm with you. <laughs> This should give you a little bit of peace in the midst of the storm. I also will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. So you're going to pay for the things you do wrong, but don't worry. I'm with you. The system is coming to an end, people. So look, I don't know. You know, if there's going to be some invasion from the north, I don't know if all the nations would be, you know, if we're going to have, I don't know. I don't know. That's not why I'm saying it. But I do know that God is with us. I do know that God is going to deliver us. I do know that God is in the process of setting us free and that we should have no fear because God is with us. So leave this show with some, you know, with some hope. And don't forget to tell your friends to, to come by and check out the channel. Share the links around, by the way, and leaving the comments. Thank you, by the way. A lot of new people for the first time ever commented. And I was so happy to see it. And I, I like didn't respond like that. I responded like this. But, but I'm, I'm happy that you do. Because, you know, not only is it cool because I get to meet you and you get to meet me a little bit. But it's, it's helpful. Because it then recommends YouTube to recommend this to more people. That people are interested in this. That there's a message here that matters and that maybe more people should listen to it so that they don't go about their lives thinking it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world but they understand that the Lord is gonna set everybody free wipe every tear from our eye regardless of how smashed everything looks I love each and every one of you please do subscribe share tell your friends and have the best day ever talk to you soon bye bye thanks for watching Jacob Israel please hit that like button Leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can, and have the best day ever. Click it.